Hello everyone, Chuck here, FixJeeps.com. Do you have LED bars mounted to your windshield, below your windshield, on your hood, front bumper, rear bumper, left and right to even light up the night? But do you have switches to control all that right? No? Well, I'll tell you what. You can follow along with me and I'll show you how I've made my switch pod to control all my LEDs. But I added a bonus to it. Check it out. I've even got dome light for mine. Want to know how to do it? Let's go. Follow along. Alright, let's start out with showing the project box. We've got a radio shack that's a few miles up the road that they're going out of business. So I grabbed these uh, project boxes here. Project enclosures. Got them really, really, really cheap. Uh, this one is an 8 by 6 by 3 this one here is for a different project, which you guys will see on another video. This one, uh, trash the box on. So it's a six by two by four. So a six inch, four inch, two inch is the size of this one. What we're going to do is this metal plate right here on top, that's for mounting projects and um, such on it, which we're not going to be using. So we're just going to throw that off the side right now. What we're going to do is put that in the top lid of this. So this right here comes off like such. And I got tape on the side of this. And so we ain't making as much racket. Let's get rid of the screws for the moment. And there it is. There's one kind of hiding up in there. It's 20 degrees outside, and it's about 10:30 at night. So you know what? I thought I'd bring this to my living room, chill, watch a movie while I'm working on it, while I'm making the cuts, because there's no need of you guys sitting watching scribe lines, cuts like that. So I'll do a shoot, then I'll cut the camera, and while I'm in between each step, I'll be chilling to a movie. So what, basically what we're going to do here is, let's get this centered inside the camera here. Turn on y'all's perspective. Okay, we're going to get this centered here as best as possible. Then we're going to hold this in place. Let's grab a line here. On the back side here. Try not to hit the camera while I do this for you guys. This one there. There. I'm not so sure that I got this back side right because I have my arm at like a really weird angle. Then. There. That should give us our lines we need here to cut out. For our mounts for the switches cool all right i'm gonna cut this right here out and i'll be back with you in a moment and well just basically what i'm going to be doing is taking my blade pressing along the lines i scribed if i can stay in them and just keep pressing gradually a little harder each time and you eventually you'll cut through then when I'll get it cut through then I will start test fitting the size of this so I'll be back with you in a bit don't know why I didn't show you guys this a moment ago if you're taking uh, when you place this on there just mark your corners here here each corner but not let it move if the project kit you purchase comes with this little metal plate you use it for a straight edge and just lay it along the straight edge right here and use the straight edge to scribe your line with. But if it didn't come with a straight edge, you can use like a metal ruler or something like that to do it with, or whatever you got that can make straight edges. So I just started using that to finish scribing my lines, and it dawned on me, wait a minute, I should have told you guys that. So back to cutting. Okay, after you scribe your lines and stuff there, you feel after a while the blade will start gradually penetrating through the plastic. 
uh, whenever you do this, make sure this is an old towel right here that's got holes and stuff like that. So I was gonna end up trashing the towel anyway, because what you may end up with, I broke the tip on this right here. So if it's down inside the fibers of this towel right here, we're good to go. But if you're outside in your shop or something like that, you don't have to worry about that. But like I said, it's 20 degrees outside, and I'm just chilling in the house, so I thought I'd work on this. So as you scribe that line, it'll gradually get deeper and deeper to the point you feel the blade come through. Then let it come back and bend it like that right there, and it'll break that out like such. Then what we're going to do, we're going to start test fitting this. I'm sure there's going to be some trimming. See right there that I'm going to have to elongate the ends of it here because it's still not going in there. But that's okay. It's one of those deals where it's better to have to cut a little extra material out than it is to overcut it and say, crap, now it's too big and it's not going to lock in place. So it's only undersized by probably 30 seconds of an inch or so it looks like. It looks like the width of it's doing okay. I may have to do a little bit of trimming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten this line out right here where it's all crooked to give it a little extra flex. This right here is a little crooked on this end, so I'm going to straighten this out a little bit, which may give me just what I need for that to lock, uh, slide and lock in. So I'm going to trim this a little bit, trim it a little bit, and keep working with it until this slides all the way in and seats. Okay, I've got it fitting pretty good now. I'll take a, set the edge in like that. And that's what we hear. Work it a little bit. I mean, it's a good snug fit from right there. But here, the little switch uh, mount, it's got these little, um, I don't know, little levers right here. That as you push it in, they're going to lock and engage inside this plate right here. Now, if you ever stay needle mount, what you'd have to do is for the back side, get you a long straight edge, push all these down across at the same time, and push, pop one side out to where it just unlocks from right here. Then the other side, you have to do the same thing. So now that we got these cut out, let's take and push this in place. You're engaging and locking in. Ta da! There it is. Now, I just want to point out a little couple of safety things. Whenever you're taking the blade and you're just cutting along through your cut, along through your position, your hands and such, whenever you're cutting, you're drawing the knife away from any fingers or anything. Please keep your fingers out of the way. Safety is everything. You will never get you. You will really get delayed on getting things done if you slice your fingers off. I promise you. So be careful with the blade. Take a little bit of trim at a time. Test fit. A little bit of trim at a time. Test fit until you get it um, set the way you want. Now this box right here is temporary. I've got some um, LED bars I'm putting in. Uh, onboard air is coming up in a future video, and I've got one of those USB panel things and pop in here that uh, plug your cell phone into the charge this is going to be running a series of my lights but I'm going to mount this uh, as you guys see later where I'm going to mount this so this is a temporary mount temporary setup until I get my consoles and stuff built before I go to lock, uh, locking these switches in place I want to show you guys something which I didn't show you earlier when we was uh, cutting that out these little switch modules or module mounts, whatever you want to call them, notice how they slide together. You can add, subtract these little pieces to make it as long as you need it. Now, one thing I really want to point out, you can put them all together, but if you get, oh, I'm going to see what the switches look like, and you take a lock all these switches in, they don't slide back apart because these switches, the place on right here, overlap just enough that doesn't allow these to slide to come apart which if you don't have the switch exactly like you want them to begin with that's a problem because these switches don't just push out at all he's got these little wing tabs right here and when they lock in they lock in very well can you get them out yes is it easy not by a long stretch so don't get all happy like ooh, i got new toys and start snapping stuff together to discover that's not exactly how you wanted them another thing i want to point out different manufacturers have these but different brand names they mold these grooves just enough different that brand if you want to buy brand a oh wait a minute i'm gonna order some more and you buy brand b 
you're very subject to have these grooves not be able to interlock and they won't be able to you know, mix and match your two kits. So if you buy brand A, stick with brand A. So what I'll do is uh, these particular models right here, I'll put a link on my website, www.fixjeeps.com. So that therefore you can always go back to my website, click on that link and order these particular modules right here. So I just want to help you guys out with that. Now I think what I'm going to do with my switches. We got Sasquatch lights. Sasquatch lights is going to be my 52 inch overhead above my windshield. Side lights, which I have not mounted yet, on the same bar with my 52 inch, I'm going to make me a set of tab mounts to where I'm going to have some lights shooting out left and right of the Jeep. So if I'm you know, cruising through the woods my cat, I can hit that light right there and I can see to the left and to the right of where I'm at. Bull bar. That's going to be the one recessed inside my front bumper. LED light bar. That's the one that's on my hood. Rear lights. I hit this right here for whenever I want to back up and I'll need a lot of light behind me. More so than just my reverse lights. So that's what I'm putting in this one. So to put these in, push and lock. Uh, da, 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 da. It's upside down. That one's being cranky. Yeah, I got, what I got to do is I got to get inside here with these little wings. I got to push them down and push at the same time. But you guys got the point. So I'm going to lock this one right here. I'll be back with you in a moment. Now let's go over our wiring. Whenever you order these switches, they come with a set of instructions here. These are 5 pin switches. So you'll be using the lower left on off 5 pins. So what we're going to do first is look at our grounds. 7 8 post right here. Now if you look right up in here, there's little numbers uh, molded into the switches. This is number 7, this is number 8. Now it says, even here in the direction says, connect 8 to ground for upper light. Connect 7 to ground for lower light, which can be jumped from 8. So you can actually jump these two right here. Being that I can jump these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run me one solid wire across all these here and solder them together to make it one solid ground to come across this to simplify my wiring. Now, on your directions, it's going to say next after 7 and 8, number 2. Number 2 is Again, if you look for a little molded number, number two is this post here. So we have this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Number two, connect number two from your source with inline fuse. This is going to be your positive power. Going to your battery, or if you have a, um, a power distribution box or something like that, that's where these are going to run into. Now, I'm going to run very light, very light gauge wire. Because I am running LED, uh, LED lights, they don't pull a whole lot of power, but these switches are not activating the LED, the LED bars, they're activating relays. The relays are going to carry the current for the um, LED bars. So I'm going to be running very lightweight wire on this, so therefore I can tuck and hide it very easily going out to my relay pack, which I'll show in a different video. They'll activate, the relays will carry the heavyweight wire and all the real work. So now, Number three, again, look at here. This one's number three. You see the number right there. Number three, number three, number three, number three, number three. Number three activates your relay or your accessory. Now, these are carry 20 amps. But I've, and most relay, uh, most uh, LED bars don't even pull that much power, but I've got something else I'm adding in along with the relays that you guys will see later on down the road. So anyway, number threes. Will power or trigger your accessories or trigger your relays or turn on your accessories one or two so those will all each have their own individual wire going out to your relay pack or to your accessory now the next one's gonna be number six again look at the number down here number six this pin is six 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 across my five switch uh, right here i'm going to tie number sixes all together as one then bring the wire out of the box so Let's start first. Let's tie all of our grounds together. What I'm doing to measure my wire out, I basically just strip back enough insulation that I cover all the posts. And then I took a 
to the kitchen where I had a little more controlled environment to where I could safely solder everything. So now I take, after I strip this back, I'll come down the wire and just kind of come down the wire and just rotate like this right here. And just twist it all together so it doesn't spread and fray as I come through here and twist her thing across the posts. So I'll be back with you in a bit. Now what we want to do is, because we're going to be soldering this wire, you can't just take this and butt it up against that and start wrapping it. Now once you got this right here twit got this right here twisted together, take your wire, twist that together a little bit. See where I've got probably roughly a quarter inch there that I've, I've wrapped. Go around one post. Do your wrap on the other side of the post. Make sure it's good and tight. Then you continue on down the rest of your post doing the same thing. Okay? So I want to wrap the thing that slipped off. So I'm going to wrap the rest of these posts, and once I get them all wrapped, they'll tend to stay on a little better. So I'm going to get all these wrapped, then I'm going to go solder these up. So I'll back in a bit. Okay, we have this all soldered up now, and made my jumpers come across here to tie together all the ones for the uh, illumination to light the LEDs up. Red is going to be your full power going to your uh, battery. White course accessory or your dash lights black is your ground I cut the black off simply because when I mount the box here to where I'm gonna mount it above on the windshield frame it's gonna be a temporary mount and I'm just doing this so I can get some uh, organization to all my wiring I'm gonna take this ground and tie it to that screw that is gonna be mounted hold this up there so therefore that's gonna provide my ground point Right now I've got this red and this white here and I'm not exactly thrilled about it because i got to run this around my windshield frame and down. It's going to be kind of a organizational mess, so to speak. Speaker wire. I like speaker wire for stuff like this. Not this particular stuff here. This is 24 gauge. I run really lightweight LED stuff off of this. But give me probably some 16 gauge speaker wire. And the reason I like it is, of course, it does have polarity. One side's going to have a... Um, white stripe the other side does not have a white stripe it does not have to be expensive speaker wire but no stretch the white stripe I'll use it here for the uh, light of the LEDs up inside the switches of course the one with no stripe on it will be the red for providing power to the switches and another really great benefit to use the speaker wire is the fact that it's bonded together so as far as uh, keeping your wiring in detail and nice much better still having two wires you have to tend to to tuck together and just create a total mess basically that's why i'm doing this to get rid of the messes so speaker wire works great you don't need expensive stuff cheap stuff works fine okay now let's play it a little bit i'm actually we're going to test i'm going to strip the wires and i've got this little 12 volt battery right here that i used to test stuff with as i put them together so it comes time to put them in the jeep I know everything works and I don't have to debug. So I'm going to strip this off, tie it to the ground. The, black, uh, the red goes to the uh, positive here, of course. And this is going to go to the positive also to simulate accessory turned on. Then we're going to test our, our switches to make sure they work. So I'm going to wire this up. I'll be back with you in just a moment. I just want to show you something. I was like, I was twisting wire, twisting wire. I grabbed, then I grabbed hold of something, felt something, my finger tug and pull. I got wire through my finger. Look at that. Pull. See my skin? My finger stretch up. Wee. Grab hold one end. Pull it back through. It's all better now. No problems. Before we go any further, let's test out the switch. And what I've got wired up here is all my grounds coming to the negative side of the battery. The white, which will be your dash lights or your accessory wired into your fuse box. Red here will be providing your full-time power here to your switch panel. And each individual positive lead coming from the LEDs from this, this, and all the and this tail light here, all the, each one of the positive leads are coming to a its own perspective switch. So 
Let's hit this one first. We have light. Next one. We have light. Then watch the tail light. We have light. Now I got to turn this one off because that was brake light. There's tail light. Then the backup light. So it looks like all the switches are working. Just one more time, more fun for the fun of it. One LED. And those LEDs is coming up in a video here real soon also. Brake light, in which this is going on my Jeep, and I'll be making a video for that. Tail light. Backup light. Sweet. See, it works. Now, now if you want to turn off your ignition key or turn off your uh, dash lights, these lights will go out. If you notice each time I turn one of these on, it lights up the upper part of the switch here. So you know, hey, this one is turned on. See the Sasquatch? That's a big light right there. It's the 52 baby right there. All right. Each one of these are wired to its own post here as you come across. And I believe that was post number, so I'll tell you guys right. Post number two, 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 two. Post number three. Post number three is your positives going to each one of your LEDs. So it's supposed to put this one on. That light, that uh, post right there is now energized. Put that one on. This post is now energized. Turn that switch off. That post is now no electricity de-energized. So that's all that's going on. So now we know our switches work. Sasquatch coming to get y'all. Now that we've tested the switches to confirm that everything's okay, now we're going to start a little bit more assembly prep. Assembly, well, you know what, I changed my mind. I decided that, hey, I'm going to have 12 volt access inside this. This is going to be mounted above my steering wheel to the top of the windshield where the um, windshield visors used to be bolted to. I'm going to be mounting them right there. So it's going to be above my, above my steering wheel. I thought, you know what, that would be a cool place for low dome lights. I'm going to have 12 volts inside this anyway. LEDs are very low demanding when it comes to power power consumption. So it's a perfect place to add a little extra light I may need. Being a soft top Jeep, I don't have the um, overhead lights and I don't have an overhead console yet. So I thought it was a good time to add a little bit of light inside the subject. So, grilled and stopped me a little switch right there. Put those in. So now that's what we're going to be doing next. Oh, since we're talking about drilling, I went ahead and drilled two holes back here, which is four. This little strip right here. And what I plan on doing, making this section right here as its own module. Then I'll tie the wires, I'll tie my switches and stuff, as you'll see in a moment, to this. Then coming out of the, out of the box will be the wires tied into here. Then I go out to the relay box, which will be mounted under the hood, for controlling all the lighting. So, two, two holes right there for your power going in one side and your uh, wire going to your relay packs going to be coming out the other side. Of course, a drill to mount those. So, let's start doing a little bit more soldering now and we'll start getting some lights and up. Okay, I'm pretending my wire right now to go to my switches. You take, whenever you strip your wire, twist it really tight pull down at the same time you'll get a nice little helical um, twist coming down it'll thin it down as much as possible so now touch right on the end of this uh, soldering tip the soldering iron tip each touch and after a moment the wire will actually accept this uh, solder There it goes. Then don't put much, you just want to touch it. Because if you put too much on it, it's not going to feed through the hole in the switches. Which is, let me back the camera up a little bit. The switches here have the holes in the tabs right there. 
you want to be able to take your wire and they will insert it up inside that. So whenever we go to solder the switches, solder the wire to the switches, it's easy to insert. And plus you got pre tinned so whenever the solder uh, flows on the tips of the switch, it flows right around the wire also. It makes a good solid bond. Next, see also I've taken my ground wire here. I've already tinned it. I'll take me a ring terminal, put on here, crimp it down real well, and probably run the solder inside it because my mounting hole is going to be up inside this right here. And whenever I take it around the screw through this plastic into the uh, windshield frame, that will act as my ground at that point. So now, let's figure out what we're going to do with the lighting here. Okay, I showed you a moment ago how to take the wire, put it on the end of the tip right there, and pre, what you call pre tin the wire. Well, I pre tinned the end of this wire and that post on the switch right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire. Lean it right up against that post. Hit the solder tip. And just remelt the solder. Wait for it. You've got a solid connection. Now I've taken my two hot wires. One that goes to the switch that controls my little dome lights here. And the other controls, feeds power to the switches along here. Tie the two ends of the wire together. You know what we're going to do next. solder iron right there touch the tip of the solder iron as soon as you get lead flow uh, lead flowing into the wire just feed along the wire let's sit there for a moment let's soak into the wire turn it loose and a very solid connection so we'll be taking that and binding it down into this to feed for our hot Now it's time to put the wires in for the switch circuit. Remember we made these wires really thin and just put just enough solder on them to make them really nice and you know rigid but thin. Because we're going to insert them into the uh, tabs here of these switches. They got little holes in them. And you want to be careful because this one right here extended all the way through and now it's touching this one. You don't want that. You pull it back just enough that's clearing everything not touching any other tabs around it so now what we're going to do you should know and that's all it took we got flow through to it came out the other side pretty decent let's get to see if we can get this one now figure out which angle I'm going to hit it at There it is. And it flowed through perfectly on the other side. So that's how we're going to tie our wires to each one of the tabs now. I'm going to solder this last one in. I realized when I put it through the hole in the tab right here, like it's just a little bit longer than I like. It's pull it out halfway. I've got a lot of exposed wire on this side, but if I put it in, it's going to hit this tab over here. If you feel like you cut it off too long, the best thing you can go ahead and do is tin it first and take your little pair of wire snips and just cut it off to where you want it. Much better control that way. Then you got proper wire depth right there. You also notice I'm running a white wire here, white wire there, and I'm putting in a piece of white wire. Well, what I've done is, if you take a, a magic marker, a permanent marker, put your black stripe along the wire, that way you can differentiate it between this one and this one when you go to assemble everything, or if you're having to track down issues. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this one in. Before I mount my binding post to the uh, case here, I went ahead and put all my wires in place. And basically what I've done is, if you look, the switches, Green comes off this one, brown comes off this one, so on, so on, so on as I come across. I've got them in order of the switch order coming across here. Then the ending, there is the white with black stripe, which is the very last switch on this side. Then I've got my accessory or dash light 
ground then my hot and just tighten all your posts down and you've got that put in now that I've got my block mounted there's the bolts and screws that go through and just so it can test and play I ran three wires outside here which is going to be your main hot ground and your um, accessory or dash light circuit so I'm going to cram all this in there and screw it down and we'll hook up a battery and test a few things out. We've already tested switches as far as them being able to turn on our accessories. Now we're going to test our uh, dome light here in a moment. Okay, let's take it for a test drive. Okay, imagine right now this wire is your negative, this is your positive here. And I've got the accessory turned off. You turn your key on it turns on those lights so you got those you know, illuminated at night during the day now if you turn it on accessory now if you hook them up to your dash light circuit whenever you turn on your dash lights your headlights whatever the case may be then they'll light those up so the white wire will be a choice of yours as to which circuit you hook to accessory or dash lights now see it turns on that one that one that one that one that one so we tested those earlier, but it's a little dark in here right now. So I thought I would just turn the light off and let you guys see it. So now let's hit the dome light. I think that would provide a little light on the subject, wouldn't it? Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. And for the fun of it, light up Sasquatch again. See everyone? That's how you build your own switch pod. So where am I going to mount this switch pod at? Right there. Two screws here used to hold the sun visor in place. And probably what I'll do is I get some longer screws, go through the back side of this right here, a couple more holes. Screw it in there, double side tape here to help support the weight, you know, not put all the pressure on the screws alone. Then that'll give me what I need till I get my consoles built and then I'll move my switches where I really want them. The Jeep and Brothers and Sisters, that there is part one of four videos on making the command center to control your LED lighting. LED lighting being all your outside LED bars on your hood, your bumper, rock lights, whatever your case may be. Part one video is the switch pod I just showed you. Part two video is the relay pack or power distribution center. Part 3 video is going to be the installation of the two modules together, the relay pack and the switch pods, uh, mounting them together and installing the lights to those. Part 4, uh, you're going to have to subscribe, you're going to hang out with me to find out what Part 4 is. It's kind of cool, it's really cool actually. It kind of shows what kind of geek I really am. Um, so check it out. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because you're going to want to catch these videos coming up. If you got any great comments, put them down below. Make them educational so we can help everyone out. So also check out www.fixjeeps.com. That's where this video and all the other ones land. It's got a lot of great Jeep information on there. So go check it out. www.fixjeeps.com. So everyone, if you like this video, remember that thumbs up. Peace out. Later, y'all.